Considering that only last year, Parasite became the first non-English film to pick up the Best Picture Award. And the Oscar goes to Parasite. The history of South Korean cinema is tarnished by heavy censorship and a volatile political landscape. From 1973 until 1987, South Korean cinema was heavily suppressed by the military regime led by Park Chung-hee and Chun doo hwan These dictators understood the value in cinema as an influential form of media. To immobilize the production of any films that could potentially challenge the people's view of the regime, the government introduced the MPPC, or Motion Picture Promotion Corporation. Similar to the Hayes Production Code for American Cinema from 1934 to 1968, South Korea's MPPC sent Answered what filmmakers could and could not feature in their films. Everything that was being produced had to pass through a very strict criteria controlled by South Korea's military dictatorship. Due to the regulations established by the MPPC, filmmakers were not allowed to show the negative side of life in South Korea, and therefore the films from this time period served as propaganda pieces rather than art or entertainment. The 1987 saw the fall of Chung Doo Hwan's regime and the rise of South Korea as a new democracy. And with the fall of South Korea's dictatorship came a new reform to the country's Motion Picture Act, which saw the liberalization of film across South Korea. This marked the end of South Korea's cinema's military censorship, and in turn gave birth to a new generation of filmmakers. Filmmakers who were given the freedom to explore whatever they wanted. This new age of Korean cinema has become known as the Korean New Wave. The country's film industry began to thrive in the mid-90s. Young filmmakers burst on the scene with relevant political commentary as well as a fresh exploration of genres. This new wave of Korean filmmakers included great directors such as Park Chan-wook, Lee Chang-dong, and one of the highest regarded auteurs of our time, Bong Joon-ho. Many of the filmmakers from this period of Korean cinema grew up influenced by Western media which was made available to them through American military radio and television stations. From all of the directors that established themselves during this period of Korean New Wave, the films of Bong Joon-ho most clearly define the word transnational. Bong Joon-ho frequently claims himself as a true media junkie. As a child, he kept detailed schedules of weekly film broadcasts from American military TV stations, the only way he could access American cinema. It's no surprise then that elements of the Hollywood style of filmmaking can be seen throughout his body of work. However, what makes Bong Joon-ho especially interesting to watch is how he seamlessly blends Korean culture and politics into films obviously influenced by the classical Hollywood style. This is the concept defined as transnational cinema. Transnational cinema is a developing concept popularized by film scholars Elizabeth Ezra and Terry Roden in their book, Transnational Cinema, The Film Reader. The notion of transnational cinema encompasses a range of theories relating to the effects of globalization upon the stylistic, cultural, and economic aspects of film. Experimenting with classic genre conventions and bringing a distinctly Korean sensibility to the traditional Hollywood-style blockbuster, Bong Joon-ho stands out as a pioneer of transnational cinema in the hybridization of financially successful blockbusters that are also pieces of art house and politicized cinema. The two films where this hybrid is most apparent are his second feature film, Memories of Murder, released in 2003, and his 2009 film, Mother. Memories of Murder follows the true story of South Korea's first recorded serial killer in the late 1980s and the police's failure to identify the suspect. On the surface, the film draws a lot of parallels to a lot of hard-boiled detective stories. The audience follows the mystery from the perspective of the detectives. Detective Park and Cho's methods are questionable, but they are clearly driven by a desire to solve the case. Their frustration is palpable and causes them to cling desperately to any potential lead, sometimes resulting in antagonistic outbursts and negative effects on the case's progress. There are multiple twists and turns throughout the narrative as the detectives appear to hone in on potential suspects, only to lose them or find evidence proving them innocent. These are all familiar tropes in the thriller genre, and they are especially present in classical Hollywood films based on the detective novels of Deshiel Hammett and Raymond Chandler like The Maltese Falcon or The Big Sleep. The sadistic pleasure Detective Cho gets from intimidating potential suspects mirrors the questionable actions of characters like Sam Spade and Philip Marlowe, who similarly use violence to get information to progress a case. The growing complications in the case and escalating tension between the detectives are also conventions of mystery or thriller films that most audiences are accustomed to. However, most films within these genres typically feature a satisfying conclusion where the suspect is definitively caught. 
No such moment occurs in Memories of Murder, which ends with the confirmation that not only is the serial killer still alive and free, but he's returned to at least one of the scenes of his murders to relish the memory of his past crimes. But this isn't where Bong Joon-ho's transnational influence stops. Memories of Murder's visual style clearly draws heavy influences from the films of Akira Kurosawa. The atmosphere that Bong Joon-ho conjures up in this rain-soaked rural village quickly alludes to the samurai films like Seven Samurai and Yojimbo that Kurosawa is famous for. But the parallels don't stop there either, since the cinematography, particularly in the interrogation scenes, clearly takes a lot of composition and blocking cues from one of Kurosawa's lesser known but equally great films, The Bad Sleep Well. But Bong Joon-ho does not simply mimic the work of others, rather, he appropriates and reworks genre conventions that have already been established, using them as a framework for exploring and critiquing South Korean social and political issues. The easiest way to see Bong Joon-ho's transnational style of filmmaking is by comparing it to another similar Hollywood film, David Fincher's 2007 film Zodiac. Zodiac actually came out four years later than Memories of Murder, but it also follows a true unsolved case of serial murders, this time set in San Francisco in the late 60s and early 70s. But even in a similar story, the tone of the narrative is completely different. Zodiac focuses heavily on the characters involved in solving the case and the havoc that it causes on their lives as a result of their individual obsessions with solving it. While the murders remain unsolved at the end of the film, the disintegration of the case itself and the ultimate failure of the police to find a suspect and solve the murders isn't at all the focus of the plot as it is with Memories of Murder. The difference between the Hollywood treatment of the police in murder mystery or detective films and the Korean treatment in similar genres is crucial to understanding Bong Joon-ho's social commentary in Memories of Murder. The South Korean social and political issues addressed by the film can be boiled down to a general distrust and lack of confidence in the police and political system at large. With its long history of political volatility, civil war, military dictatorships, and the passionate struggle for democracy, South Korea's attitude towards trusting establishments like the police is understandably disdainful. Many films within the new Korean cinema movement, especially those of Bong Joon-ho, share this critique of the police force or the Korean establishment as a whole. This critical lens is almost entirely missing in similar Hollywood films. The failure of the detectives to catch the killer in Zodiac or the escape of Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs are not due to bumbling police force and poor communication, but the evasiveness and intelligence of the suspect. Watching Memories of Murder with these socio-political filters in mind, it is clear that Bong Joon-ho is not merely attempting to duplicate Hollywood thrillers in a Korean setting to create a financially successful film, but to make a film within this successful genre and enrich them with deeper themes that are relevant for Korean audiences. The other film which best displays Bong Joon-ho's familiarity with Hollywood style and deliberate focus on Korean society and culture is Mother, released in 2009. Starring two of South Korea's most well-known actors, Mother follows the story of a single, aging mother and her mentally handicapped son, Do Jun, who is accused of the murder of a young girl. When the police speak to witnesses and find evidence that Do Jun was following the murdered girl on the night of her death, the case appears to be open and shut and Do Jun is thrown in jail. Mother, whose name we never learn, then makes it her sole quest to find the real killer and exonerate her son, a goal which consumes her and ultimately drives her to murder the only man who knows the truth. Like Memories of Murder, Mother is fraught with tension and an unsettling sense of relentless determination. Mother's plight is sympathetic, but the lights to which she goes to protect her son are nevertheless shocking and unexpected. In terms of its relation to Hollywood, the tone of this film is very clearly inspired by Alfred Hitchcock, similar to his famous thrillers like Vertigo, Psycho, and Strangers on a Train. As an audience, these films leave us teetering on the edge of our seats in a constant state of suspense. The tension builds until it reaches a breaking point usually a moment of extreme and surprising violence or a shocking narrative revelation. These few outbursts of violence that do occur are then portrayed as almost cathartic, releasing tension like steam from a pressure cooker. Mother could also be compared to other Hollywood films which focus on the terrifying results of a mother-driven past or breaking point, like Carrie, Mommy Dearest, or Friday the 13th. Though these films are more indictments of an individual, unstable mother, than motherhood in general, the similarities between Mother and the Hollywood counterparts are present, but ultimately only skin deep, as the themes Mother speaks to are much more relevant for Korean audiences. The elements of Mother which are distinctly Korean begin with the casting. A fact that would be lost on American audiences unfamiliar with Korean film and television, but which adds a layer of richness to the story, is that Mother is played by Kim Haija, a very famous Korean character actor who is well known for her roles as the sweet motherly figure in soap operas and TV dramas. 
For Western audiences, this would be akin to Carol Brady going on a desperate quest to save her son, which slowly drives her to madness and concludes with her committing brutal murder and arson and finally choosing to forget it all. Clearly a darkly playful nod to the cultural knowledge of Korean audiences, Mother's casting is the simplest way to observe how Bong Joon-ho is speaking directly to his local audience. Finally, the elephant in the room is the central relationship of the film. The codependent relationship between mother and son and the subsequent condemnation of motherhood as it is understood in South Korea. Mother is an overwhelming presence in Dojun's life. He rarely seems to go anywhere without her being with him or at least being in contact with him. She feeds him, always noting which foods he should eat more of to maintain his health. She provides him with medicine constantly and even observes his urine, checking to see if it's a healthy amount, the right color, etc. The two even sleep in the same bed together. It is clear that Mother's attachment to Dojun is extreme, and yet her actions are sympathetic and understandable. Upon learning that in a period of extreme poverty and deep depression, Mother attempted to poison Dojun and herself when Dojun was five years old, her subsequent fawning over him and constant concerns about his health finally make sense. In light of these facts, the viewer doesn't necessarily blame Mother for her enveloping love of her son, but the events of the film do give us serious pause and make one question the value of a mother's unconditional love for her child, upheld in many societies as the epitome of human connection. The relationship between this concept of motherly love and Korean society is where Bong Joon-ho lays his critiques. According to one of the books of Confucian philosophy that illustrates the centuries-old gender roles that are still prevalent throughout Asia, the Book of Rights, the woman follows the man. In her youth, she follows her father and elder brother. When married, she follows her husband. When her husband is dead, she follows her son. This view, though very outdated to many people, is very likely still the norm for many middle-aged and elderly women in many rural Asian communities. Bong Joon-ho uses Mother to critique this tradition with the frightening question, how far would the sweetest, kindest, most unassuming Korean mother go for her child? Though the trend of mothers bending over backwards to please and accommodate their children is certainly not limited to South Korea, it remains an important piece of the culture that can be analyzed and exposed as potentially unhealthy and even toxic. Even the fact that we never learn the character's name, she's only known as mother and nothing else, only further emphasizes the director's point. Bong Joon-ho uses the conventions of the Hollywood thriller, especially those elements made famous by Hitchcock, to engage Korean audiences with this issue and pose the question, how far is too far when it comes to protecting our children? In the hands of another director, Memories of Murder could easily have been much less complex and much more singular in its aim. But because it was made by Bong Joon-ho, whose media-saturated childhood made an encyclopedia of film and language aesthetics, it combines globally recognizable Hollywood production values with a specific and local Korean sensibility. Similarly, Mother could be a straightforward thriller, were it not for the insightful touches like the casting of Kim Hai-ja that he brought to the production in a Hitchcockian thriller critiquing outdated expectations of Asian mothers. These films not only stand on their own as perfectly made pieces of cinema, but they also serve as cultural critiques for Korean viewers to engage with. But Memories of Murder and Mother are not the only films by Bong Joon-ho which illustrate how the director infuses Hollywood style and aesthetics with a distinct Koreanness. This quality is more of a trend throughout his body of work, beginning with Barking Dogs Never Bite and gaining speed with films like The Host. The transnational identity of Bong Joon-ho's filmmaking would also explain how his transition from South Korea to Hollywood was so effortless, with films like Okja and Snowpiercer. However, Memories of Murder and Mother are especially notable because of their subtlety, because the stories they tell do not necessarily have to take place in South Korea, and yet in the capable hands of Bong Joon-ho, they still manage to speak directly and intimately with a Korean audience as well as a global one. Of all the directors that emerged from the Korean New Wave movement, Bong Joon-ho appears to be one of the most dedicated to this kind of hybrid filmmaking, never relying too much on Korean or Hollywood style and themes but always finding a happy balance between the two. His films truly act as a cultural melting pot, combining elements from different cultures to create something new, refreshing, and ultimately globally enjoyable. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing as well as supporting us over on Patreon. It really helps support and grow this channel and you can get exclusive access to behind the scenes content, early access to videos, and vote on what video we release next. Stay healthy.